Hey, welcome back to the second half hour of the Joe Wall Show. We begin this half hour with a, a leftward shift by the Democrats. What does it mean? We'll drill down on that. And look, plenty of good news tonight, including a surprising ruling out of the most liberal court in the country. And finally, as always, our gallery of the stupid with entries from politicians to naked men. Where are we at? We're three and a half months out. I want to know how the Democrats feel. And I want all of us listening and watching tonight to understand how the Democrats think they're sitting about three and a half months out from a very important election. To drill down on this, always pleased to be joined by Robin Biro, a Democrat consultant and strategist. Robin, welcome. Let me start you, here. And I want to start very broad with you, my friend. We are okay. about three and a half months out. I know you. I, I know you're not some crazy liberal Democrat, <laughs> but you're a solid, long-time, sincere, genuine Democrat. You would like Sorry. to see the Democrats take control of the House and the Senate. Three and a half months out, tell me where your confidence level is. Uh, you know, I... My confidence level is not quite there yet. Uh, th this is no time to be complacent. Uh, these things have been changing rapidly. Just about every three weeks, we see a shift in the polls. Uh, just today, a new poll came out. For, it was a Quinnipiac poll that showed that uh, of college, non-college educated voters, Donald Trump has lost quite a astounding percentage. I think it's like 19%. Um, so, you know, that was surprising, but not really considering that so many people are paying more when they're going to places like Walmart because of the tariffs. Uh, so, you know, yeah. we're, we're, we're gaining some inroads there. Uh, but like I said, it's absolutely no time to be complacent. Anything can change, especially with this president. You know, it can change with one tweet. Well, and again, from your perspective, Robin, as a Democrat, as you look at the Democrat Party right now, and Democrat candidates around the country. Let's start with the bad. What's got you most concerned? As you're watching the landscape out there, what worries you the most and concerns you the most from your Democrat perspective? Yeah, absolutely. So what concerns me the most uh is uh, you can you can uh, appreciate this the candidates that are getting the most attention are of course the most extreme on either party uh, so uh, ocasio cortez of course we've been hearing about that every day all day long in conservative media that she's you know actually the party says she's the face of the party i will say that she's 28 years old sure the case could be made that she's the face of the party but as a democratic socialist i as you can uh, understand i'm concerned about the party swinging to left uh, overcorrecting to Donald Trump. Uh, so I'm concerned about that. I was concerned about that when we had Bernie Sanders on the ticket uh, and, and I was dealing with that. You know, I'm a political director here in Atlanta, so I deal with, you know, in the trenches with this every day. Um, so I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about overcorrecting. And like I said, those extreme candidates being the ones that get the most press coverage when honestly, it, I would say that about 90 percent of Americans agree on the basic core issues. Um, and, you know, there are extreme GOP candidates. There are three self-identified white supremacists who won primaries. So there's extremists in both sides. But, you know, it just concerns me that we're being painted with a broad brush of now that we're becoming the party of democratic socialism because of that one election. Um, that, that's Robin, let, let me... Uh, yeah, let, let me play a devil's advocate with you. I'll put myself in a funny position. Look, I think my side, the Republican conservative side, is looking at this leftward shift and, and getting excited about it, getting confident about it, that if, if the Democrats are going to become so lefty, so liberal, that's going to help them. I, I see and hear from a lot of people on my side who dismiss the energy and the anger on the far left. But then I go back to 2010. I was a Tea Party candidate then. All of the energy and anger was on the far right, and the Democrats dismissed the Tea Party anger. And then we went on to grab 62 seats and take over the House. Maybe it's not such a bad thing that you've got all that anger and passion on the far left. A good point. Uh, it, it is there. We're trying to harness it. It's been a tough road, uh, you know, with, with WikiLeaks um, dumping all of that, uh, what everything that happened with the DNC, which was 
reprehensible. Uh, we've still had a very difficult time trying to, to win back the disenchanted Bernie voters, um, but I think they're they're yeah. getting more fired up every day. Um, I just, I, like I said, I'm a little bit worried about the party overcorrecting and going too far to the left that mainstream Americans and the heartland and the flyover states uh, won't identify, can't identify with us anymore. I've known personally a number of people who have left the party because they felt that the party is becoming too far to the left. Uh, so now they identify as independents. So that is that is a concern. But uh, you know we are registering so many new vote voters, um, and yeah. uh, you know we're we're making good progress. But I I really don't have any room to be complacent. Um, but uh, you know the the basic the basic outline from the party. Let me let me just say this: what the party's pitching right now, because we're, we're criticized very heavily for not having a platform, but what the DNC is doing is letting each candidate develop their message specially tailored for the districts that they run in, uh, which I think is mm -hmm. a very smart move because it, it you know, at the, in the end of the day, what really matters are the issues at the kitchen table, people in those particular districts. Uh, so that's why they've been staying away so much from some of the you know, big issues. They haven't really outlined, a, a, other than education and healthcare uh, as, as issues, there really hasn't been a lot of direction other than go into your communities and find out exactly what their issues are. And that's why we've been winning special elections. So, so then, Robin, again, from your Democrat perspective, as you look at the landscape now, let me ask you the flip, flip question. Uh, you're confident that you can retake the House and or the Senate because why? I, uh, I, the Senate's going to be very tricky mathematically, uh, if not impossible. So I'm just trying to manage people's expectations as far as that goes. The House, we, we've got... We've got a lot of inroads there. Uh, the polling is, uh, you know, ever since 2016, I've been real gun shy on polling. You can understand why. But the polling is definitely looking in our favor. Uh, I will say that fundraising, the DNC is not doing nearly as well as the uh, RNC when it comes to term of, terms of fundraising. However, the candidate, the month, that's because people still are distrusting of the DNC because of what happened in 2016. So the money is being funneled directly to the candidates themselves. Themselves. Uh, they've been out, the candidates themselves have been out raising Republican candidates. Uh, that more than 50 House races right now have out raised Republican candidates in, in districts that they were not expected to win. So the money's looking good in those particular districts for those particular candidates, but it's not looking good for the DNC. They have a lot of co coalition building and a lot of trust to regain within the party itself, Joe. Hey, Robin, if the Democrats took back the House, would Nancy Pelosi be the next speaker? I hope to God not. I mean, I'm just being brutally <laughs> honest here. You know, she, her time has come and gone. She is a California Democrat, and I myself, as a Georgia Republican, can't identify much with California politics, uh, sometimes New York politics. They seem uh, to be of a different breed. Uh, and I think she's sort of out of touch. And, and uh, you know, I've been to many functions with her, and she kind of stays up to herself up in the rafters and doesn't really go down and mingle with the common people, those of us that are actually doing the work in the trenches. So I would like to see somebody who's going to be more a leader of the people that are actually doing the work. Robin, I love your straight talk. I always love having you on. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you, too, sir. Hey, coming up, good news, especially a surprising ruling out of the most liberal court in the country.